Well, now that we've finished unit pricing, our next section in the finance unit is currency exchange, or part of the first section. Uh, what is currency exchange? We're talking about exchange rates. So if you're going for a trip and you need to change your money to a different currency, you need to exchange it. So first couple terms we need to know about, we have our exchange rate, a rate that specifies how much one currency is worth in terms of the other. Proportions, proportions are how we set it up. It's the easiest way to set it up. Buying rate, a rate a bank pays you when buying foreign currency from you. And then there's what's called the selling rate. The selling rate is what the bank sells the foreign currency to you for. We'll get more into that as we go. Exchange rates change every day. Before exchanging money, many people research the current exchange rates. So um, this is why some of those terms are over there. Uh, Andrea is going on a trip to New York for a ski trip. The day. The day they exchange their money, one Canadian dollar equals 92 cents US. So this is the selling rate. This means that one Canadian dollar equals 92 cents US dollars. Write each conversion as a proportion, then solve. So Andrea's sister has $100 to spend. How much will she get in American currency? So we'll set this up this way. We want the US currency. It's our unknown. Unknown is dollar US. Now, for you French students, I'll do this, put the dollar sign at the end. So I set this up as a proportion. Put 0 0.921434 dollars US over one Canadian dollar. Okay, that's this set up, and the US is on top because US is my unknown. And over here, I have X dollars US over the number of Canadian dollars I'm going to buy. 100. So to figure this out, so notice this, dollar, Canadian dollars. US, US, they're both on top. Canadian dollars, I shouldn't put that line through my C. Canadian dollars, dollars, Canadian, Canadian are on the bottom. Now I gotta get X by itself. It's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna multiply both sides by 100. So that cancels, and I'm going to put 100 Canadian dollars here. Canadian dollars, Canadian dollars, X US dollars is going to equal 100, so 92 dollars US. 14 cents. I know, I moved the dollar sign. <clears throat> Same deal. I'm going to move this question two down a bit. Well, maybe. So, do that, give us some space. So, question two, or B, she has $250. Set it up the exact same way. I can do it this way, just make it look a little bit different. So they're gonna put X over 250, US over Canadian, US over Canadian. Multiply both sides by 250. I'm using the whole number here. So X equals 230, 36 dollars US. So for $250, you get 230 US. 
How much do they get in American currency? And again, the last one now. Sister's gonna have $92. Andrea's gonna have 230. Parents? Let's see, I'll do this over here. Parents. X over 1200, because that's how much they want. That's how much they have. US 0 0.921434. Again, do not approximate. Multiply both sides by 1200. X equals 1200 times 0.921434. So the parents, their $1,200 becomes 1105.72. When I'm doing the exchange rate, use the whole decimal. Do not approximate. It'll give you the wrong number. But my final answer, we think of money as two decimal places. Number one, and an extra special thing, do not round this to the fives because you actually need the pending part. So that's part A. In the end, okay, they're after the trip. They're on their way home. This is the crazy part about the exchange rate. It changes constantly. It's never the same. At the end of their trip, the family converts the money they have left back to Canadian dollars at that time. The bank offers a buying rate. So they're gonna buy back the US dollars. And they're going to give them, they're gonna buy it back for $1.1283 Canadian dollars for each conversion, uh, write each as a proportion, blah, blah, blah. So Andrea's sister has $5 left. So $5. So let's do it this way. We're gonna want Canadian on top. So it's X over five. So X is gonna go with this because we know that this is Canadian on top, 1.1283 over one. So I multiply by five times five. X equals times $5.64 Canadian. So that's how much Canadian money she has left, or gets back after she, the bank buys it from her. Then that's this. Now Andrea, same deal, she has $25 left. And she wants it in Canadian, over 25 US. And that's equal to 1.1283 Canadian, over 1 US. So X equals, multiply both sides by 25. times 1.1283, I get 28, 21 dollars Canadian. So it's important to see how much, how it changes. Um, this is nice and easy for us. Sorry about the bell. Um, that finishes off our first little example on using exchange rate. Convert between Canadian currency and foreign currency after Hurricane Yolanda volunteers to go to the Dominican to help uh, rebuild homes. She's budgeted this much Canadian for, for expenses. On the day Yolanda exchanges her money, one Canadian dollar is worth 37.25572 uh, RD, which is Dominican currency. Estimate how much she will receive. So, part A, we're trying to find Dominican. RD, how much RD 
for 675 Canadian. So RD over Canadian, 37.25572, over 1. So multiply both sides by 675. And X. Be two thousand or twenty five thousand one hundred forty seven sixty one RD. So in her Dominican currency, she'll get 25,000. Calculate how much she will receive in Dominican. Well, we just did that. Uh, estimate how much she will receive. I didn't do that. Oops. If I were to estimate that, what I would do is probably say, okay, well, it's close to 40. So maybe 40 times 650, somewhere in the 2400 range was a little low if I were to approximate. Everybody's going to have their own strategy. When she returns, Yolanda has this much left. On that day, the buying rate for one Dominican Republic peso is this. That's what the government, the bank is going to give her. Uh, how much will she receive in Canadian currency? Same thing, set it up. The Canadian dollars on top now because that's what we want to know and she has this much Republican or Dominican Republic currency and then Canadian over one Republican or <laughs> not a Republican multiply both sides by 2198 And she gets fifty-eight ninety-nine back from the bank. On the same day that Yolanda sells her Dominican currency, a friend buys the same amount of Republic Dominican Republic pesos. The friend pays more for each peso he buys than you land a receipt for selling them. So this is, gets into when you go to the bank and you're looking at exchange rates, is when the, the bank has to make money. So whatever the actual exchange rate is, they charge you a bit more so that you get less than what the exchange rate is if you're buying Canadian dollars, or they charge you more in Canadian dollars to get US dollars because they got to get their piece of the action. And so it's never going to be, the selling rate and buying rate will never be the same. Last one, solve problems involving currency exchange. Patrick refurbishes motorcycles. He found a part he needs while surfing the internet. The part is priced in British pounds, 30 pounds. The shipping cost is four pounds, 20 cents. In a town near Patrick, the same part costs 84.75, tax included. When Patrick checked the exchange rate, he found the following information. Which source has a better price for the part? By how much? So if we take the 34, the British price, British price with shipping, is going to be 34 20 pounds and so we're going to set this up x canadian dollars over 34 20 pounds is equal to ooh, here we're going to get into a little One Canadian dollar over zero point six 
6, 3, 4, 5, 9, 7. Mm -mm -mm. Pounds, pounds, that leaves me with a million dollars. I want to double check this, 34.2 divided by. And I'm just double checking something here. 34.2 times 1.5758. Look at that, same number. Okay. So I can do this two different ways. I do it this way using this, and I get. $53.89 Canadian. I could have chose this column. If I chose this one, it's going to look a little different. Because what's happening here, oh yeah, I'm going to show this. Multiply by 34.20. Multiply by 34.20. So that means I end up with division. So it's this divided by this. Over here, in Canadian dollars, I'm going to set this up a little bit different. I have x over, this means one pound is equal to 1.5758 dollars. That's what this means. So 1.5758 dollars is one pound. So this gets set up a little bit differently. I've got the 3420 equals one 0.5758 over 1. Multiply by 3420 again. It still gives me the same price. 5389. And because we're doing so much with currency, you got to make sure to have the unit so you know what country you're talking about and all that stuff. Where would you recommend that you buy the part? I'd recommend he buys a card online because even if that didn't include tax, I add 15%, still going to be less than the $85 in Canada, $84.75. And I'm pretty sure that's it for unit conversion. Yeah, next up will be wages and salary.